Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking how the new AMD box coolers compare. Uh, I'm not sure why, but this has been a heavily requested video, so I've made it happen. We've got your Wraith Stealths, your Spires, and even your Prisms, so we've got the whole gang to check out. Just quickly, for those of you unaware, the second gen Ryzen processors come with one of the three Wraith models I just mentioned. The Ryzen 7 2700X is the only model to come with the fancy looking Wraith Prism, and it's also the only processor to sport a 105 watt TDP rating. So the part does clearly call for a much beefier cooler, and a much beefier cooler it gets as the Wraith Prism weighs in at 580 grams. I think the fan alone weighs more than Intel's box cooler. The Ryzen 7 2700 and Ryzen 5 2600X get the Wraith Spire. This model tips the scales at 372 grams, making it 36% lighter, but it does still sport a copper slug in the base. Then we have the Non-X 2600, which gets the little Wraith Stealth weighing just 317 grams, making it 15% lighter than the Spire, and a whopping 45% lighter than the Wraith Prism. I'm assuming those of you who bought a Ryzen 5 2600 want to know if it's worth buying the Wraith Spire or Prism second hand. They often appear for sale on eBay for example. Likewise, those with a 2600X or 2700 want to know how much better the Prism is than the Spire. So I'll be comparing all three coolers on the Ryzen 5 2600 using the stock settings as well as a 4GHz all-core overclock. I'll be monitoring both the CPU and VRM temperatures during an hour-long blender workload as well as the 30-minute Overwatch bot match. The coolers have also been tested inside the Deepcool New Arc 90, a large full tower ATX case that comes with an all-in-one liquid cooler pre-installed. Of course, when using the box coolers, the all-in-one liquid cooler has been pushed aside, but we will still be using the four 140mm fans that are pre-installed, though all these fans are configured as exhaust fans, so if you are using this case, I would probably recommend putting a few intake fans in the front. For this test though, I went with the limited airflow setup, as the point of testing inside a case and not an open test bed is to more realistically simulate the conditions you'd probably be using these air coolers in. It's also winter here, so I'm testing in a rather cool 20 degree room as it is. Having said that, in a follow up video I will fit the new Arc 90 with more fans and install the Ryzen 7 2700X to test out how well that build works with the liquid cooler. For now though, let's compare the AMD box coolers. First up, I've measured peak temperatures after 30 minutes of playing Overwatch during our bot match stress test. Using the Wraith Prism saw the 2600 peak at just 47 degrees, which is very cool, and the VRM temperature never exceeded 43 degrees, so these are exceptional temperatures for a reasonably heavy gaming load. Uh, speaking of which, the CPU utilization hovers around 50% in this test. Because of these low temperatures, the Prism fan never spun faster than 1600 RPM, and at that speed is virtually silent. Moving to the Wraith Spire increased the load temperatures by 6 degrees and although the CPU is now running hotter, the fan speed for the Spire only maxed out at 1700 RPM so the operating volume was much the same. VRM temperatures also remained much the same as well. Then with the Wraith Stealth we see a further 7 degree increase for the load temperature and now things are starting to get warm at 60 degrees. Remember we are only half pushing the CPU in this test so let's move on to 100% load with Blender. So running the Blender workload for an hour increases the Wraith Prism load temperature to 57 degrees, and that's a 10 degree increase over what we saw in gaming. The fan speed has also increased 2000 RPM, but even here the Prism still was basically silent. This time around the Wraith Spire was 8 degrees hotter than the Prism as temperatures hit 65 degrees, though that is still very cool by all accounts, and again the fan only spun at 2000 RPM. Then finally with the cooler that comes with the 2600, the Wraith Stealth, we see temperatures hitting 72 degrees and now we are getting up there. Ideally you don't want temperatures going too far beyond 70 degrees for prolonged use. That said you could increase the fan speed for better results as even the Stealth was spinning at just 2000 RPM. I should note though that the Spire and Stealth do a good job of pushing air over the motherboard's VRM. Okay, so I've overclocked the 2600 by pushing all cores to 4 GHz using 1.2 volts, and this only increased the CPU's operating temperature by a few degrees in Overwatch. Fan speeds also remained much the same. The VRM temp did increase by 4 to 5 degrees, but at under 40 degrees, that's nothing to be concerned about. Of course, we are using a high-end X470 board, but still cool temps on the VRM. Now for the 100% load test using Blender, we see that the Wraith Prism hits 63 degrees, which is 6 degrees hotter than what we saw with the stock test, and now it is just possible to hear the fan as it spins up to 2200 RPM. 
The Wraith Spire allows the overclock 2600 to reach 70 degrees, and with the fan now spinning at 2700 RPM, it's quite easy to hear. The Wraith Stealth also hit 2700 RPM, making it reasonably loud, and despite that temperature still hit 87 degrees. That's an almost 40% increase in operating temperature from the Prism. Before wrapping things up, here is a quick look at how the Spire and Prism compare to the ultra-affordable Deepcool Gamax 200T. Presently, this 120mm tower cooler costs $115 US on Amazon and proved to be a valuable upgrade for the Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G, as both APUs are bundled with the Wraith Stealth. For Ryzen 5 2600 owners, it'll net you Wraith Prism-like performance when gaming, though it is worth noting that the 120mm fan does do a much better job of cooling the VRM, at least it did on our X470 board. The Gamax 200T also appears to be a decent upgrade option for the Ryzen 5 2600X and R7 2700. Now with the Ryzen 5 2600 under 100% load in our Blender workload, the Gamax 200T is more comparable to the Wraith Spire, making it a bit hotter than the Prism. Although less impressive under these conditions, it is still a solid upgrade option for Wraith Stealth owners. Well, I hope for those of you who have been requesting this comparison between the Stealth Spire and Prism, that the testing has satisfied you. If you have a Ryzen 5 2600 or any other AMD CPU that comes bundled with a Wraith Stealth cooler, then you will ideally want to upgrade that for something better just to improve the thermal performance, especially if you plan on overclocking. Seems like a lot of you do want to stick with an AMD brand of cooler, and while I agree, they do look pretty cool, they're not really cost effective. Now looking at places like eBay for the Wraith Prism, they're selling for around $40 US and that doesn't include shipping. And for that kind of money, you can get a seriously good air cooler. Remember, the Deepcool Gamax 200T is a very affordable budget option, and even it wasn't much worse than the Prism under 100% load. In fact, I'm willing to bet the slightly bigger Gamax 300 is able to outperform the Prism. So if you can do without the AMD branding, then I suggest you look elsewhere for your cooler upgrade. I'm very keen to hook up the liquid cooler in the new Arc 90 to see how well that works, and then of course up the thermal load with the Ryzen 7 2700X. For now though, that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. The link's in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.